Later that night, I just couldn't sleep and went up to the rooftop, only to find Magnus behind me minutes later. Sorry, I feel extra paranoid after what happened tonight. You know something, Magnus? Jake is wrong about many things, but he's right about one. You've been lying about who you really are, and I know who you are. Do you? Yes, you're a vampire. Magnus looked at me for a few seconds, then started laughing. Don't mock me! I know you have superhuman strength! You crushed my metal doorknob, which I'm guessing you replaced before I woke up. I saw you lifting a boulder like it was a cat and running at supersonic speeds. You have a heightened sense of hearing. That's why you heard me talking in my sleep. And that ring you wear? It's an amethyst, and it protects you from the sun, right? Also, I noticed your face when you saw my blood. I don't think blood makes you sick. There's another term for it. It's called blood lust. Magnus's face was as expressionless as a rock. You're wrong. Suddenly, I felt furious, and I stepped onto the ledge. What do you think you're doing? Vampires can fly too, right? According to all my research, they can. So I'm gonna jump off the roof, and if you're a vampire, you'll save me. And if you're not... Are you insane? Get off the ledge! Admit that you're a vampire! I'm not a vampire! Stop lying to me! Just get off, and we'll talk, okay? I promise. I was about to climb down, when suddenly my foot slipped, and I fell off the roof. The scream had barely left my throat, when I felt Magnus scoop me up in his arms and fly up to the sky. Oh my god, oh my god, we're freaking flying! Marion, are you out of your mind? What if I wasn't a vampire? I wasn't actually gonna jump. That was an accident. But thank God you're a vampire. And I can't believe I'm flying. Woohoo! We flew over the city lights and ended up on top of a tall building, looking down at the amazing view. Are you gonna tell me the truth now? Why would a vampire need a job as a bodyguard? Aren't you guys supposed to be loaded? What are you actually doing here? And who tried kidnapping me tonight? If someone could send you flying like that, it wasn't human. You're pretty smart, aren't you? I didn't think so after reading that novel of yours. Aha! So you hated it! Okay, okay, we'll talk about that later. <sighs> Since you've done your research, I'm sure you know that vampires are almost extinct by now. Humans over the centuries have tried everything to eliminate us, but the most successful campaign against us has been to poison every water body in this earth with silver. It does nothing to humans, but once it's in the bloodstream of vampires, it slowly kills them. Cancer. There are only a few hundred of us left now, and we'll all die. How long have you been alive? About three centuries. Whoa, and now, how much time do you have left? Maybe another 50, 60 years. To be honest, I'm okay with that. People wish they could live forever, but when you live that long, you witness a lot of terrible things, and I've seen enough. However, most vampires don't share my view, and some of them are very sick, so they'll die soon. That's kind of where you come in. Me? What do I have to do with this? Do you have any idea why your hair turned white and your eyes changed color? No, I just know I was five and I was vacationing in the Swiss Alps. Apparently, when you were there, you ate a very rare magical flower. The kind that blooms once in centuries. Oh, I did like eating flowers as a kid. That flower caused your eyes and hair to change, and it gave you another power. It makes your blood pure from silver. And that makes it a cure for the disease killing vampires. How... how do you know all this? Many years ago, a vampire with very strong power said she'd seen a girl in a dream whose blood was made pure by that flower. She described her with the unique features that you have, so you can imagine that vampires have been looking for such a girl for a while. And then a few weeks ago, I saw you on the news with your father. I wanted to get closer to find out if you're the one, so I'd been keeping an eye on you. The creature you met when you ran from home, that was me. I knew it wasn't human. So, should I be afraid of you? Are you after my blood? No. I told you I don't want a longer life. But I did fake my references and signed up to be your bodyguard to get closer to you, find out if you really are the one, and then protect you from the other vampires who will inevitably find you. I think one of them just did. And you're sure it's me? I wasn't, till I smelt your blood tonight. It definitely is you. Okay, okay. This is a lot to process. You know, I can donate a little blood if it'll save you guys. A little won't do. They'll take enough to kill you. 
His words sent a shiver down my spine. So what do I do now? I'll, I'll never be safe. I'll be hunted all my life. The only thing I can think of right now is to get you to a safe place. And then I have to somehow convince the other vampires that you're not the one. Why are you protecting me? Why do you even care? Because you don't deserve to die so we can live longer. Also, I, I've developed something like affection for you. Uh, let's say I've grown fond of you. 300 years on this planet and you haven't learned better words to tell a girl you like her? How about I tell you another way instead? And then Magnus pulled me in for a long kiss. We didn't want to send my parents into panic mode, so I acted like I was really shaken up by the recent kidnapping attempt and needed to get away from the city for a while. Magnus said he could take me to a safe house, and my parents agreed. I'm surprised my paranoid parents trust you so much. I may have used my hypnotic convincing powers on them. I am both fascinated and terrified by you. I would never hurt you. Just trust me on that. Magnus drove for hours deep into the countryside, and the safe house we arrived at was a giant-sized mansion, more luxurious than any place I'd ever seen. He settled me into a huge suite and then placed a locket around my neck. I have to go right now, but my servants here are completely trustworthy and will look after you. If you need me, just press on the locket and I'll be here in a heartbeat. Will you be alright? Yeah, of course. Magnus kissed me gently and left, but I just couldn't sleep that night. I couldn't get rid of a nagging feeling in my heart. I looked over at my phone, wanting to call Jake, but I had no signal. Finally, I jumped out of bed and left my room to explore the mansion. I just reached the main hall and was looking at a painting when suddenly, loud alarms started blaring all over the place. I stood frozen in panic and started pressing the locket like crazy. And within seconds, Magnus was by my side. There's a security breach. We need to leave. Now! Just then, the main door flew open and a man walked in. He was tall and pale like Magnus, but his cheekbones were sunken in, and he had a manic look in his dark eyes. What's the holdup, brother? You were supposed to bring the girl to us weeks ago. Uh, excuse me? Leonard, was it you who tried to kidnap her yesterday? <gasps> yes, because I don't know what's been taking you so long. We need the girl now. I needed to be sure if she's the one, and she isn't. I've seen and smelled her blood. Why should I trust your judgment? We can try the cure with her blood anyway. If it works, fantastic. If it doesn't, who cares if we've killed one human? We'll keep looking. No! I won't let you kill someone senselessly! These humans are the ones who poisoned us. You promised you'd find the girl that could cure our community! Madness, you lied to me? No! I mean, it started off that way, Marion. But now, I really don't think it's right to kill anyone just so we can live longer! You mean you're stupid enough to have fallen for this girl and now you've changed your mind? So, is she ready to turn into a vampire for you? What? I don't want to be a vampire! No other way for you to be together. This love story is doomed, brother, so let her serve a better purpose. Leonard leapt towards me, and Magnus let out a snarl and attacked him. The two were fighting viciously as I tried running towards the door, only to find Jake running in. Oh my god, Jake! You're B positive, right? What? Your blood type. Uh, yes? So am I. Just wanted to make sure before I do this. And then, Jake pulled out a syringe full of blood and stabbed me in the arm with it. Ah! My scream made both the vampires turn towards me, and I felt a weakness that made me drop to my knees. Your hair and your eyes, they've gone back to normal. What's going on? Her blood isn't special anymore. It's contaminated. Leonard, it's over. She's of no use to us anymore. Leonard stared at me with a manic face, then let out a furious scream and attacked Jake, who immediately fell to the floor while Leonard escaped. Jake! We have to get him to a hospital, now! He's gonna be okay, right? Yes, he just has a concussion. He'll be fine. He better be, or I swear to God, I'll kill you. I started punching Magnus angrily, and he grabbed my wrists. He will be, and I'm sorry about everything. You lied. You didn't become my bodyguard to protect me. You wanted my blood. Yes, I lied, but I didn't want it for myself. There are so many vampires who are really sick by now and don't want to die. I wanted to help them. 
but I swear, a day after I met you, I already knew I'd never be able to go through with it. I don't want to kill any human, least of all you. And I never meant for Jake to get hurt, either. How did he even find me? And how did he know the whole blood thing? He's a smart detective. I did have a tattoo on my wrist, which is my family crest, and I had a feeling Jake had seen it and would dig into it, so I removed it. Also, I found some micro bugs on myself today, and there's probably some on you too. He's been hearing everything and tracking us. And he just decided to come and deal with vampires and save me without any backup? That's crazy. People do crazy things for people they love. <gasps> By the way, I'm resigning as your bodyguard. You were fired anyway. Magnus smiled, then took my hands. There's no chance you would go out with me, right? Not if I have to turn into a vampire. What did your brother mean by that? I am, after all, a creature that thirsts for human blood. If I was around you long enough, I wouldn't be able to resist the temptation, and I'd eventually end up turning you into a vampire too. It wouldn't be the worst life. You know, you'd get superpowers. I'm really rich. We could fly around the world. It sounds tempting, and hella scary. Magnus, you're lovely, but I don't see a future here. I don't like you enough to even think about giving up my life as a human. And you shouldn't. You're a pretty special human. And between the two of us, Jake's the better guy anyway. He's got a really good heart, and I do see you two having a future together. So, I guess this is goodbye then, Marion. Goodbye, Magnus. He kissed me on the cheek, and then left. And a few hours later, I was so relieved when Jake woke up. <gasps> I overheard the whole crazy conversation about Magnus being a vampire and your blood being the cure to the vampire disease. It was so absurd, it sounded like those stupid stories you write. Can you stay on track and not insult me? But it all added up. And you figuring out that he was a vampire was actually pretty cool. You seemed convinced that he was going to protect you. But I couldn't trust him, so I followed you to his mansion, waiting for a chance to get in. I figured if your blood is special and that's why vampires are after you, I had to do something to make you just like the rest of us. I didn't know if it would even work. It was just a hunch. I guess your gut instincts make you a good detective. You knew from the start something was off about Magnus. Yeah, but that might have more to do with jealousy. I mean, come on, I'm straight as an arrow, but sometimes even I just wanted to stare at his face and touch his hair. I don't blame you for crushing hard on him. Yeah, but maybe that's all it was. A crush. He left anyway. He said you're the better guy. What? He did? Why? Beats me. I mean, given his superior looks, his amazing voice, his superpowers... I'm sorry I asked. But you're definitely the better kisser. Believe me, even I was surprised. His kiss kind of gave me a brain freeze. Wow, I kiss better than a hot vampire? Can I have this in writing? You'll have to kiss me again, so I can be sure. 